All right. Uh, let's get started. Tension. Trump. Chung Yi. Good. Okay, let's just start jogging on the spot. Okay. Um, scooping block. We talked earlier about taking the arms out of the plane of where they have structure. If I take my hand too wide, okay, I lose, I lose its structure, I lose its strength and stability. And you, again, do this with a partner. You know, you put the hands together, squeeze them, they'll be able to fight, put their hands a bit wider and they get weaker. But with a scooping block, and this is going to engage in the connect, uh, connecting motion as well. So let's just run over that really quick. So we had fast motion, multiple techniques, one breath and one drop. Um, continuous motion, breath in, breath out, breath in, breath out, breath for both techniques. Ultimately it's like normal motion, but there's connecting motion means you're doing, you're doing two techniques back to back with each other. But it's just breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Connecting motion is where you breathe in. So let's just, if I use your gok as the example. So the first block here, I breathe in, I breathe out, because it has no connection. Okay, so I'm stepping forward, hooking block. In, out, in, out. Trying to exaggerate the breath control so you can hear. In, in, okay. So that's on its own. The next technique in your gok, okay, when I, when I perform that, I'm gonna go in, out. Now I'm going to go in on the hooking block because it's connecting to the next technique. So I breathe in on the second hooking block, out on the punch. Yes? So first one, in, out. Second one, in, out. Okay, does that make sense? First one, in, sorry, in, out. Second one, in, out. It's connecting. So what it does is it joins the two together. It's a reference point to say, these techniques rely on each other to be performed with each other. So it's connecting motion. Now, with that thought in mind, you've got to consider the hip, okay? The hip twist. And I'll do it in, uh, let's do it in scooping. Scooping block here with the back fist, okay? Uh, sorry, the punch. One, two, in uh, Gavin. So with the scooping block, when we do this, Unlike the palm upwards block, the palm upwards block always stays in front of us, okay? Palm upward block. If you do a palm upward block, and a lot of people will do this, they do the palm upward block here. So as I'm going forwards, they go like that, okay? The hips are facing forward, palm is now to the side. Well, that means you're going to do a scooping block, okay? Palm upwards block always stays in front of the shoulder. It may appear to rotate, but that's because I'm going to rotate my hands. Actually, all a palm upwards block, if I keep my body torso still, all a palm upwards block does is this. Okay, that's all I'm doing. I'm bringing it back to my hip and back up again. Up, back to my hip, back up again. If you now see this from the side, you see up, back to my hip, back up again. Up, back to my hip, back up again. If you see it in rotation, in, with my hip motion, now you'll see the circle. Okay, so now you're watching. As I come back, it's still in front of me. It's now dropping down to my hip. It's now going forward and up again. When I do it in motion with my upper body, now you'll see that the hand appears to be coming backwards. It's not coming backwards. It just stays in front. I'm turning to allow this to stay in that position. And that way, that makes that a very powerful technique. Scooping block is not a powerful technique. Scooping block is like hooking block. It's designed to gather. It's designed to maintain contact. So you wanna gather something. You know, somebody's a kick in or they're driving through and you wanna gather the leg or you wanna gather some momentum. You're picking it up and you're maintaining contact. Okay. You want to have your hand so it can travel and pick up lots of width, lots of space, because you're gathering something, it's unpredictable. Um, so that gathering of something allows you to bend your knees, and when you scoop, you scoop and you lift up. Okay? You, you're actually lifting your body upwards. The hips come in with the technique. So that's, this is a, 
a hip rotation rather than a hip snap. It's not, it's not accelerating to create impact and speed, it's creating support and structure. So it works with the scoop. So the hip now back. So now you'll see from the side, my hand will come off that plane. It comes, out, comes away from the front of the shoulder, comes off that plane. I'm increasing what I can gather, lifting up to then drop and into the technique. So uh, let's just have a few of these on, on the spot. What you to do is I just want you to turn your hips, gather up the side, pick it up and drop. Allow your hands, so now if I stand still, my palm upwards was doing this, okay? Now without moving, my hand is doing this. So now I'm making that circle because I want to increase the range that it moves to give myself more chance of gathering up whatever it is I'm doing. So let the hand go back. Okay, you create the, the rotation, but create the turn as well. So your hand's gonna go back and you're gonna bring it up. Back, hip pulls back, hand pulls back, and you, you'll see my hip is working with my hand all the time, okay? Stays with my hand. So this is assisting the technique uh, you know, in motion. It's not using a hip snap to create acceleration. It's using hip rotation to support the technique. That's it, and about superb, spot on, exactly that. The palm coming up is the chamber for your punch. So as I come through here, okay, the palm is coming up, and that becomes the chamber for the punch. Now, so the question just asks, what is the hand position? How do they differ from the two? In palm upwards block, you're using palm heel, okay? I'm using this area here, okay? It's a, and it's a striking area. It's, it's got a hit very hard underneath the wrist, okay? There's no rotation. We had the question the other day, is there any rotation in palm heel? Most of the techniques we do in Taekwondo, there is wrist rotation. Um, whether it be on a horizontal plane or whether it be on a vertical plane, there is rotation, with the exception of a few. This is one of them. Um, straight fingertip is another, arc hand is another, and you'll get just what. This technique here, it's palm, the, the palm heel is uppermost, okay? So you're trying to snap this heel into whatever technique, obviously the technique will be coming the other way, but into the, into the underside, the under mitt of the forearm, um, to, to generate that sharp power. That's palm heel. Scooping block is palm. Okay, so now we're talking about the whole palm because we're not looking to create impact. We're not looking to cause any damage. In fact, quite the opposite. We want to gather it. We want to almost support it. We want to get as much contact as possible because we want to be in control of it. So allow with the scooping block, allow your hand to demonstrate a flatter plane with a scooping ball, not a palm heel that you see a lot of people do, which is, which is great, that, that punch forwards to there, using that palm heel, that's, that's palm upwards block, but it's a palm heel you're using, not the whole, the whole hand is the palm. 